fans, I have to tell you, things really seem to be looking up here at the end of the year. We know that all the new NVIDIA cards are coming, and we know the new AMD cards are coming as well. Just yesterday, AMD did a huge announcement. They're going to have two different events. The 8th will be all of their new Zen 3 CPUs, and then we're also gonna see on the 28th, the 6,000 series of cards, but there's actually some new rumors about those cards. So let's talk tech. Are you looking for a code for your favorite game? Or maybe you need a new Windows 10 key, but don't want to spend a lot of money? Here's your chance to get the best deals online at CD Key Sales. Game codes are as low as $10, and Windows keys are under $15. And right now, you can save an additional 18% by using the code TT18 during checkout. Buying has also never been easier. Just create your account, select the items that you want, put in the discount code and complete checkout. All of your purchases will be in your account ASAP and all the keys and codes are guaranteed to authorize without a problem. So save big today and buy with confidence with CD Key Sales. Okay, so like I said, there's been a lot of rumors surrounding the brand new 6000 series cards from AMD, the pricing, the performance, all this different type of stuff. And what we're seeing now is there has been some really cool leaks from this guy named Igor from Igor's Labs in Germany. Can't really speak German, but the translator will get it all across if you guys want to check it out. And he's done some pretty good predictions in the past. And now his predictions seem to be very, very interesting. So it seems like originally we were going to see the top of the line 6000 series card coming into market at about $599. That's for the 16 gigabyte edition. And for the eight gigabyte edition, we were going to be seeing it come in at an even lower price. You know, who knows exactly what that price will be? Probably more like around 499. But here's the thing, since Nvidia has this huge release they just did. It seems like the prices might be even lower. We might be seeing 549 for their top end card and 449 for their eight gigabyte card. And that's going to be really, really crazy stuff because that will definitely be competitive with Nvidia and their cards, most definitely, because we all know the new Nvidia cards for the 3080 is going to be about $700 and it's $500 for the entry level 3070. And also what we're hearing is it's a lot is going to depend on the power. If the card has about 275 watts of power, it's probably going to be competing more with the 3070 series. But if the card gets 300 watts or more power, it could actually be competing with the 3080, at least on paper. And that'll be really crazy because if AMD can come out with a card at $549, right? And NVIDIA's solution is $700 and it's only a few frames per second difference. You know, everybody's going to flock over to Team Red and buy the heck out of these new cards. You know, I mean, a 16 gigabyte card with all the latest features and everything, the fastest RAM, you know, all the RDNA too. I mean, these cards do have potential, I admit, to be serious threat to the people over at NVIDIA. My only thing is traditionally though, we've heard all these rumors and everything, and then when launch day comes and we actually do the testing, they fall really far below what they usually brag about and hype about. And that's, you know, that's really the only one thing that I really don't like about AMD is they really overhype. Now, people get mad at NVIDIA because they say they have high prices, I understand that, but NVIDIA honestly doesn't overhype. It's probably more like reviewers like me who get really excited about this stuff and we're the ones who are actually hyping it up. And that's just the bottom line truth. NVIDIA's never hyped anything up. I've never ever went to an NVIDIA briefing where NVIDIA is just like, yo, basically, you know, we blow everybody away. We're so better than everybody else, yada, yada, yada. Those words, honestly, don't ever come up in an NVIDIA briefing. They concentrate on their product. That's what they do. They tell you the specs. They tell you what's going on. They tell you what their performance, you know, what measurements have been. 
and then they let you go about your business. They don't coerce you, they don't tell you what to say. And that's one of the reasons why I personally stopped taking samples from AMD. A long time ago, when, when I was working with AMD, I was working with a guy, I'm not gonna mention his name because I'm not trying to throw him under the bus because he's become a really nice person. They were actually trying to control what I said control my scoring and control everything else. So if you really believe a lot of these people's AMD reviews out there are completely honest with you, I'm gonna tell you right now, they're not. AMD is very hands-on. The only people that they sample are people that they pretty much know are going to give them good publicity or their channel is just so big they can't ignore them. Like, you know, whether Linus is gonna say they suck or otherwise, there's an old saying, you know, that any publicity is good publicity. So even if they give their car to one of the bigger sites, let's just say like, Let's just say, you know, Burke from Gamers Nexus. He's a big YouTuber these days. You know, even if he's gonna kick the crap out of your card, there's probably a really good chance they're still going to sample him. But other people who don't have that much traffic, AMD tries to control them. They try to control what the video says. They try to control what the testing is. Now, I don't know if they've stopped doing this stuff. If you're a reviewer out there and you actually work with AMD, you can reply to this video and you can let me know. But that was my experience and I actually made a video about that before saying this is why I'm not taking AMD samples. I do not get coerced by money, by pressure, by anything else. Anything you hear on my channel is my opinion. People keep saying that I've been paid for NVIDIA videos. I've been paid for AMD videos. I haven't been paid a penny by any of these companies ever to say anything, not ever. If my video is sponsored, it will have the sponsorship in it, like you're seeing today with the ad that does the rollover. That's my sponsor. They're the people who pay me and they have nothing to do with the tech industry other than the fact that they sell Windows keys and game keys. So it's a big, you know, different thing to me. Also, another little kind of little, you know, I gotta say, kind of nail in the foot about these new cards is that currently none of the aftermarket partners, none of them, XFX, ASUS, none of them right now actually have all of the technical details and everything to make their own 6000 series card. So that means that even after the announcement, it'll probably be a couple of months before we see any of these cards hit the market. That's just how it is because it's going to take time for all these companies to get everything going, implement it, get it to market. For the companies that are out there that are doing custom cooling, they're gonna to have to design all their own custom cooling around these new cards and everything else. So it takes a little bit of time. So even though the release has come out and I know everybody's saying, oh, ditch all your old cards, ditch all your old cards, get rid of your old 20 ATIs, get rid of your AMD cards. I would suggest you really do not do that just quite yet because even when all these new cards hit the market, a lot of those cards are gonna be sold right off the bat and then you're gonna see prices soar for a little while. Like usual, we've seen it. It's kind of like the repeating cycle every time it happens. So you may wanna just hold off on getting a new card just yet, you know, unless you're absolutely going to have to do that. Now, another comment that a lot of people made in my last video about stuff is they were saying that, you know, AMD, even though their CPUs have come a long way, they still think that their motherboards are kind of pathetic and in a way I kind of agree with that. The AMD CPUs have come a long way. AM CPUs are rocking these days. Zen 3 is obviously going to be major kick-ass product but their motherboards are still lacking in compared to the Intel chipset motherboards. There's still some tweaks and stuff that they have to do. We all know that PCIe generation 4.0 is here. It's on AMD only, it's not at Intel, but how well this is going to work and if it's actually going to make your card any faster by this, I'm going to say no. Um, just for shits and giggles yesterday, I pulled a card out of one of my old systems and put it on an old system. So we're talking about a PCI 3.0 down to a PCI 1.0, I got two frames per second difference. So how much really difference is the PCI thing? I mean, it's all good on paper. In theory, it sounds awesome. Yeah, it's faster, it works better, but is it actually really? Only time will tell. Now, I know on the NVIDIA camp side of things, they've said that, you know, hey, you know, we're gonna have a card that works better with PCIe generation 4.0. They've said that exactly how that's going to translate and if it is going to do that, well, that'll be something you know to be seen. Will it bring more frames per second? Maybe not, but what if it just makes it more efficient? Maybe they've done something with you know generation 4.0 PCIe that is actually gonna make the card run more efficient. Like I said in another video, optimization is really the key to what NVIDIA is doing these days, optimizing everything on their cards. And hopefully, now that AMD has, you know, gone to the boards with these cards, they've done the same thing and redesigned everything and made these cards incredible. But at the end of the day, 
If AMD can actually release Big Navi at like $549, damn, I think that's going to spell serious, serious competition for the people over at NVIDIA. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, also, I wanna say this, I am really not a big fan of AMD's coolers. I mean, I think that the Founders Editions, even though they ran a little hot, I preferred actually the way they looked just as far as looks visually than the AMD reference models. They're usually pretty boring. I think that some of the other companies like XFX and Sapphire and Asus and Gigabyte and all these companies, they're going to have better aftermarket designs. And most of the time those cards do run cooler. It's not always a factor. There have actually been sometimes cards that I've got from aftermarket companies that run hotter than the reference model from AMD, but that is kind of a rare you know, thing. It's not usually the norm. That's kind of you know outside the norm. So if there's a rule, there's an exception to the rule every so often as well. But right now, that's it, folks. If you guys have been paying attention to everything going on in the tech world, it's really a very exciting time. After pretty much being bored all year long with mediocre releases and boring stuff that's just like, you know, keeping us going to so many hype and what if videos on the internet from us tech guides, it's ridiculous. I mean, we've almost become like the what if of the tech industry. Well, what if this happens? What if that happens? Ah! What if all that happens? I don't know, it's been crazy. So at least it's good to finally have some really cool tech to review. I mean, I can't wait to get my 3080 reviews out to you guys and there's only a few more days away till that. So pretty much hang on to your hat. It's just literally probably what, a month away till we see the new video cards from AMD. But here's the whole thing. We all know that Nvidia did not really release everything they could have released. They're gonna wait for AMD to release their cards. They're gonna take a look at what their cards are, they're gonna take a look at the price point, and then they're gonna come out with some card, we all know it, that's just slightly faster and a little bit more expensive, and that's how the market goes. That is just how it is, it's been going on for years. It's a leapfrog thing. One company, one company, one company, one company. They just keep leapfrogging each other all the way across the spectrum and you know, and that's it. And so far we've seen most of the time that Nvidia does take the lead, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it would be very, very nice to see AMD take the lead for once again, it would be nice. I don't really feel that AMD since they bought ATI has really been, um, I don't know, as thriving of a video card company as ATI was. I was a big fan of ATI, AMD you know, did stuff a little bit different kept the color scheme basically the same for the for the for the video cards but that's about it um if you guys actually know back in time amd colors amd's colors excuse me were actually green and black which would have kind of been a conflict with nvidia now since nvidia is kind of green and black so everything became team red team red anyways that's today's video, folks. I totally appreciate you guys for watching. If you like what you see on my channel, hey, I'd love if you were subscribed. And if you hit that little bell next to it, the notification bell, you'll actually notice that my videos are showing up. And it seems like that YouTube has fixed something with my channel because people are telling me they're seeing my videos in their inbox again. So that is a double thumbs up and a yay! Hats off to Harper moment for me because I've been busting my butt for a long time. And even though I was sick for a long time, I still kept making videos, but now I'm better and healthier. And for those who ask about my health, thank you so much. God bless you. My health has gotten a lot better. I'm much healthier as you can see. I'm much happier now. Um, and a lot of that has to do with friends of mine. I'm just gonna say without my friends, especially Jonathan from TLD, I would not even be able to make it. So personally, I'm in debt to a lot of people and I love them for helping me because, you know, there's an old song by the Beatles that says, I get by with a little help from my friends. That definitely applies to this guy. So thanks for watching. Also, if you wanna support the channel, you can try Amazon Prime for free for 30 days. The Boys just released their second season and let me tell you, it is gory, bloody, and crazy. And if you wanna watch The Boys for free, check it out. Click that link down below and you can do it. It doesn't cost you a penny. It gives me a little bit of cash and we all win. I'll see you guys back here on the channel for more tech here on Tech of Tomorrow.